Well, hi, everybody. Uh, I see uh, friends from previous uh, webinars that are, are here. Um, I'm Meg Herman, and if you wanted to learn about raising prices via raising value, you're in the right place. So today, we're going to talk about, uh, first of all, um, Katie, I know you less. Here I am. Hi, Katie and Debbie and uh, my Amira and Sarah. And I'm sure there's some other people that are going to be joining us, but those are names I recognize right now. So um, without further ado, uh, what, let's talk about what you're going to learn from this webinar. We're going to uh, describe how you can begin to articulate the basic types of benefits and values that your client can get from your product or service. And if I say product only, I'm in the business world, we talk about services as products as well, so you're still included. So remember that the benefits you provide or the value you create for your customers will determine what prices you are able to set for your products or service. So you want to evaluate the importance of this value to your customer. Further, we're going to describe how your product or service creates this value and how this value might be improved in the future. And this is something that you will be analyzing as you go throughout your business life. And finally, we'll be exploring how to estimate and quantify how much of a customer will pay for a product or service. So you will be doing that on your own, but the, the tool that I'm giving you today will help you do that. And I'll talk a little bit about that when we get to that point. So as you join the webinar, the Growth Wheel Tool Product Value will be sent to you. Unfortunately, there isn't an article to go with this, so, um, uh, you're, but remember, this webinar will be, rec is being recorded and will be available to you under our archived webinars under events, um, should you want to review it in the future. So, um, as we, uh, let's, let's take a poll now, um, and I appreciate you uh, putting up with our polls because uh, they're uh, important to our funders for us to track uh, who, who shows up for these uh, webinars. So uh, let's have poll number one. So we're asking you how you found out about this. Um, so if you'll just take a moment to let us know. Okay, so let's close this poll. All of you heard about it through our website. Good, I'm glad you're watching the website. And uh, we've just, uh, in the last week or so, posted our May and June events. So you can schedule those uh, webinars that you want to take uh, that are Growth Wheel webinars if you, since some of you are becoming positive Growth Wheel junkies, and that's good. So let's do uh, poll number two. So now we're going to find out where you're from. And I and it looks like almost everybody is from the local areas. So I want to remind you that you are always welcome to come in and take advantage of our free counseling, our coaching. Um, so that can be done by phone or in person. So remember, this is not the only way to, to get help from us. Okay. So um, you can see that all of you are from Chicagoland. Okay. So during the session, we'll show you the Growth Wheel Product Value Analysis Tool. And, and um, it's a, a fill-inable PDF file. And it'll be stored on our website. So um, uh, you, you're special. You get this. Um, and <clears throat> people who don't participate don't get it. So lucky you. All right. <clears throat> so also you have an opportunity at the end of this uh, webinar, which will be a shorter one since we're only doing one tool. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I was not sharing my screen. I am so apologetic. Uh, sorry. Um, hopefully you can see it now. So because my screen wasn't shared, I'm going to go back and show you the, um, the intent of this webinar. So 
these are the four things that we hope you'll be able to learn more about during this session. The basic types of benefits and values that your client gets from your product or service. Um, to evaluate the importance of this value to your customer. To describe how your product or service creates value. Um, and how the value might be improved in the future. And to estimate and quantify how much the customer will pay for a product or service of this value. So again, at the end we'll have time to talk together. So uh, all of you have been here before, so I'm going to go through this slide very fast. You know that this is a tool to work through your own issues with uh, me or somebody else or your, just yourself. Um, and this is the growth wheel for sections. The section that we're looking at today um, is um, uh, up here. And, uh, in this, in this section, the yellow section, and where we're looking at the business concept and we're looking particularly here at the product portfolio. Remember that the Growth Wheel 360 screening, which most of you have taken already, and in the future I'm going to be calling this Assess Your Business with Growth Wheel Tools. So don't take that if you took it before, unless you want to, but you, and you're welcome to. Um, this is a way to quickly create an overview of all the challenges that are maybe on your mind as an entrepreneur. It becomes a scoreboard where the advisor and you can draw up a visual profile of how the business is doing and, and, and a way for identifying future growth opportunities and obstacles. And hopefully the result is in a clear mind and a, uh, and a full overview of where to focus on next. So when we look at the tool that's in this area, it's like, what, are we, what do we mean by product value? Um, we're looking at you making decisions that relate to creating or refining the value proposition of your product or service. And you may have multiple products or service. And, I think, and, I, and for the purpose of this webinar, I think it's helpful for you to think about just one of those products or services and kind of think it through with the tool and then um, you know, come back and replicate it with other products or services and run through the same analysis. So again, we have to think about, we ask you to think about um, what's your intent? Do you, are you just interested in re-examining the value proposition of your product or services? Because you will. Um, are you thinking about raising your prices and you're worried that you don't want to do it so high so you price yourself out of the market? Are you trying to figure out a price point that the market will bear and that you st allows you to still have a decent profit margin? Or do you just want to take the money and run? I'm sorry. So let's look at the levels of product value. I'm going to spend a fair amount of time on this page. So uh, you, I don't know whether you want to take notes on this or not. But when we talk about the levels of product value, we start at the bottom with the physical product value. Um, we, the growth wheel um, authors have uh, articulated this product value in, obviously, these four areas, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. And, um, and so your product or service needs to give life to the customer in the ways that are important to them. So let's look at each one of those levels. In the physical level, uh, this, is, this is, what do we mean by that? This is the tangible aspects of the product, i.e. how it works. Is it practical in the manner that needs to have value to the client? Is it priced at a tolerable level in the eyes of the client? Think about the Apple Watch and your reactions to it. I have a very laughable reaction to this because I wear a watch already. And so, you know, like, why would I want that itty bitty screen? I already have a watch. Um, so let's look at emotional. When we talk about emotional uh, 
Now, some of you may, may really enjoy the Apple Watch. It's getting a lot of information today, which is kind of uh, in this week since it just launched last Friday. So I'm, I'm going to use that example um, throughout this particular uh, section. When we talk about emotional product value, it's, it, it means how does the product appeal to the customer? Is it and its packaging appealing? And when you think about services, services also have packages. How do you frame them? How do you describe them? Um, the emotional value, product value, also has to do with how does it interact with the customer? What wants and desires does it meet or serve? What relationship does the customer have with it and the brand? Again, think about the new Apple Watch. So for some people, they always buy the newest product. It's part of uh, having status, which is an emotional need for people, or being the first to use it. Uh, so you know, what emotional needs does your product or service uh, meet? And mentally, this means uh, how does the product work for them? It's usability. They may get the function but not see a use for it for themselves, a.k.a. my attitude towards the Apple Watch. Um, does the logic of the product make sense to them? Is it believable, rational? Is it usable for them? So when I look at the product or service that you're offering, it, it's not only what it can do, but what is it that I want it to do? And does that fit? Spiritually, now, this may sound highfalutin, but this type of value speaks to how the product fulfills and responds to the customer's values. This area is about meaningfulness, identity, and purpose. So the key thing to remember is that there are different types of product value to take into consideration when designing products and services. Instead of only providing one type of product value, a product may appeal even more if it provides several different types of value. So um, uh, when uh, I'm going to be looking at questions uh, as you go down in high to UK. Uh, so let's go on to the next slide, because this next slide is an exercise that uh, some of you have done already uh, through uh, workshops you've done, but it still doesn't hurt to do it again. So, um, so now I want you to, and this exercise is going to go with and complement the tool that I'm going to show you next. So um, I want you to draw a grid or a table on a piece of paper. and um, uh, with four columns. And the first column labels one product or service. And the second column labels the features, the feature or features of that product or service. In other words, what does my product do? How does it function? And then the third column is labeled benefits. And that gets at the value from my client's eyes. And fourth, what are the problems my product resolves, i.e., how does it make my clients live, lives better, easier, more pleasant? So hopefully this exercise will help you think about your client when they're searching for relief from a problem, a gap, or a need that your product or service might solve, fill, or meet. This is really important that as you get further and further along in your business, you will see that you um, uh, will need to talk, you will inevitably talk about the problems your product resolves because you're going to be in relationship with customers and caring about them and you're going to be talking about things from their point of view. So, um, so you have to learn to recognize these. So you can walk with your client to your, to your solution. Learning to recognize and articulate your understanding of the client's problems is so essential. Um, because customers need to get the message that you hear their pain. 
really. And you're not just trying to sell them something. Selling in its highest order is a relationship-based process that is about both parties gaining something. One gains a resolution to their problem, the other gains um, the opportunity to sell their product or service and to be of service to their client. Okay, so this is something that will take some time and if you're not used to thinking about your product this way, it, it does take a bit of time, but you will get the hang of it. You can start anywhere. You can start with your features. You can start with the problems. But in essence, you have to get here and build out this language, which then leads to the benefits, which then sells the product. When somebody says the something sells itself, it's because the, the owner has thought strongly about who their client is and what it is that they're trying to do. Okay. All right, so let's go on. All right, so now for the big unfold. Here's the tool. I hope. There we go. Okay, so again, remember the tool's title is up here, and the, the big a value is to increase the prices through giving more value to customers. So we're going to spend a lot of time on that sheet, on this sheet. So remember that the Growth Wheel tool helps you examine ways you can add value that your customers recognize as added value. Going with what I know, I will provide examples with, of, of a WBDC being the company uh, analyzing how we provide value. There will be some other things too that I do, but I'm starting out with WBDC. Um, because even though we're a not-for-profit, we act like a business and we and your growth is our business. And so we are measured on your outcomes, your, your ability to stay in business, your ability to um, raise um, revenues, capital, um, increase your clients, increase your employees. So, um, so these are important things for us too. So let's look at, remember over here you have your intention, you have your process, and you have your next step. So again, you can see that the, the statement of the benefit you provide or the value you create will determine what your prices are, uh, are where they can be set. And by reviewing uh, the importance of the customer, uh, of reviewing the importance to, to the customer of the benefits and value you create, you can get inspiration for ways to increase the value and get higher prices. So we're going to start with defining what each of these are, and I'm going to give an example of each of these. But you can see first you have to identify the potential value to the customer. And, and you see there's a, place, a couple places down here uh, that you can add your own uh, unique value, you think, for the client. But you're going to look at what's a, what's a value and how important is it to the customer and how does this product create the value. So the exercise that I asked you to do right before this, and I think it should precede you really working on this uh, form, uh, really will help you begin to articulate this more fully. And then finally, after you do that, you're going to look at how, you know, that's going to trigger some thought about how to further improve the value for the future for the client. And it's going to help you look at how much the customer might be willing to pay for this as a benefit. This is where this last one, um, this last section over here, this is uh, where you're going to really look at um, your market research and you should be looking at the industry trends and uh, competitors to determine what are the, uh, the, the, the values that those provide and what are the prices that those competitors uh, put um, for their prices. So let's look at revenue generation, the revenue increase. So if you can help your uh, client increase their revenues and help them sell more, hallelujah, 
This is this is like baseline number one. So, for example, when I worked on this for WBDC here, I was looking at well, um, our um, online courses, for example, allow people to learn on their own time and in small doses. Or our marketing courses help businesses learn about market research and refine their target market uh, descriptions so they provide better marketing tactics and strategies. This would allow our clients to increase their revenues. So cost saving, the other, the flip side of revenue increase, of course, is cost savings so that you can create better margins. So WBDC helps people build business plans that outline steps and operations that can create new efficiencies. Um, if I were to take that further out, it was it would be uh, that clients would be reporting on this, and I would say um, one of the ways we improve on this value is to have client testimonials that say, hey, I increased, I decreased my expenses by learning how to be more efficient in my operations thanks to WBBC, their courses and their counseling. And uh, then, you know, for, for you, you might have a, there might be a value placed on that. And in a way, we can place, we could place a value on that and charge more for our workshops, for example. Uh, so that could be a way that we would improve the, the uh, value of cost savings to WBDC. So then looking at brand strengthening, WBDC coaching helps clients establish what they stand for, having them articulate their mission and, and values. Many people don't realize that this is a value until after they've done it, and then they're extremely grateful. And then what we would do to improve that is we might encourage people to use either our online courses, um, enroll in our plan for profit class, or if they're more established businesses, we might help them with um, uh, some of the established business offerings that we do for meeting up with corporations. We might encourage people to get certified if they're going to work with government entities, um, and we you know, we might be able to garner loans. As, we are, as I said, we're measured on, you know, how many loan dollars we get into the community. Um, so those are ways that we are able to build um, on the value that we provide. Okay, so let's look at the fourth one, goal achievement. What we mean here is, here's where we, we're helping um, the, the customer with, achieving their goals. So our example, my example would be the WBDC teaches clients how to set better goals for themselves and their businesses. How does this further improve uh, value? They come back. And so we are measured also on like counseling hours and counseling people, number of people that come through. So if they're coming back and they're utilizing our services, that helps us meet certain grant deliverables. Okay, so problem solving is our next one. Perhaps your product helps customers cut costs or meet their customer requests more efficiently. So perhaps uh, the product or service you have, I'm thinking of Sarah, who's on the call, who provides um, uh, linguistic support by um, helping people um, modify their accents uh, who are uh, people who are non-English speakers so that they work with English speaking people more effectively. So she creates value by helping her clients be understood and then she creates further value by making it easy for them to learn about accent modification through her webinars. And therefore she can begin to charge prices um, for her webinars that might be more useful. Um, okay, so let's look at opportunity creation. Ah, sorry. Um, so what we mean by opportunity creation is where the product or service creates new opportunities for the customer. So in what I was saying, um, what I was thinking about is say you opened an online shopping cart for your business. 
now you've created ease for the customer to order. So um, maybe like if you were a um, marketing specialist and you did that for them, you have now made it easier for their customers to buy, uh, to shop and to buy. And so you've made life simpler for them. And you've solved a problem of them uh, perhaps having uh, you know, capacity of uh, having a store. I know one woman who had a great store in the town I live in, in Oak Park, Takara. And she had at one time three stores. And, um, and then she went back to her base store. Um, and she provided a wonderful uh, avant-garde women's clothing. And she had an opportunity when her lease came up to continue the store. And she had already started dabbling in online business. And she chose to uh, do the online business. So it, it, it solved a problem for her. Up and it gave her cost savings, but it also um, helped her reach her clients more effectively. Her, uh, her following could still follow her. So, and that gets a kind of risk reduction for herself. But in risk reduction, um, what I thought of here for an example was attorneys, accountants, um, insurance brokers help small businesses avoid fatal business errors in legal accounting and liability areas. And so, how might your product or ser uh, services reduce risk? Um, in the case of Sarah's clients, I would say that uh, the companies that hire Sarah are reducing risk by making sure that their opportunities are not lost because people cannot be understood. I hope that's representing you fairly well. Um, Sarah says big value. Um, so, um, oh, I didn't read all of that. Um, Sarah says, what BBC programs and webinars, smart, efficient, cheap MBA program? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, probably better. Um, okay, and then finally, let's look at experience improvement. So, think of an event planner. planner. Your business might hire one if you were going to do a recognition event or a launch of a new service or store. And putting that event management into the hands of somebody who's a professional probably will save you time and money uh, rather than you losing time doing what you do that's most valuable. Uh, and putting that with some, you know, one of the things that small businesses have to do is learn how to delegate. And that's a good example of delegating because sometimes, um, sometimes it's just better to have others do what you could do, but not as well and not as efficiently, and is taking you away from your core competencies uh, of delivering and selling your particular product and service. So, um, so this, again, you, you have the process here of how to go through this. You have uh, hopefully given you some information about how you um, uh, work through this uh, tool to sort of think through and analyze the value. I think with the previous exercise that I gave you, you'll be in pretty good shape uh, to begin to articulate value in ways that per perhaps you haven't articulated before. So the next step is, of course, to work through this tool on your own and use it to reevaluate your products and services. So think about what are the types of product value that your services or product offers. Can they be designed in another way to accommodate more types of product value? And are there types of product value that your product or service does not provide, but should it? So these are the questions that you really want to think about as you sort of look through these lens. After you've done the work on the, on the tool, then look through the lens of these questions to help you think about, am I missing something? Is there some other added value from my client's perspective that we can add or articulate that's in there that's, but, 
but it's kind of like under the surface and people aren't really seeing. Okay, so it's just going to be about your turn for questions now. So the next thing then, of course, is to schedule an appointment with an SBDC advisor near you. Um, you, with a certified growth wheel advisor, determine which additional tools you might want to work through. Um, and again, you can see the variety of tools you might work with at growthwheel.com. Then, make an appointment to see me or Joy Taylor, who is uh, going to be newly certified in about two weeks, uh, as your certified growth wheel advisors if you're in the Chicago area. And if you're outside of Chicago, find your closest SBDC. And remember, the sessions are free at all SBDCs. And if you're in the state of Illinois, you can meet with us in person or by phone, and you'll be expected to complete the SBDC intake form. But all of you know that because all of you have been here before. And so finally, call us. Make an appointment. And if you're established a business, ask to meet with Joy Taylor or Cynthia Johnson, although Cynthia is on the road a lot, so we, we are turning towards Joy. And if you're startup to three years emerging, uh, let the schedule uh, let the schedule know you attended this webinar, and she'll hook you up with either me or or Deborah or Nicole. Now, I also want to mention to you about the other um, uh, webinars coming up uh, in May and June. Um, so, because they're like too cool to 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 miss. Also, I think if any of you are interested in doing uh, work with government. There's a great um, half-day seminar coming in on uh, uh, the uh, 4th of May, so next week, yeah, next week, um, called Stimulating Your Business's Growth with Government Small Business Programs. So if you're thinking about government work, take a look at that. Um, if you're thinking about government work, you should also, and have not looked at certification, we have a workshop called Is Certification Right for You? Uh, both of these um, seminars are free uh, and in person, and that's coming up on the 12th of August. Um, on the 13th of uh, uh, August, truth, May, I'm wishing this obvious. Uh, on the 13th of May, we have our next growth wheel tool, um, and it's going to be on um, choosing your marketing mix. So you'll probably not want to miss that. And then on the 20th of May, we have one called Prepare to Get the Capital You Want, which is a, is a growth wheel tool. But we also have a number of, if, if you're looking at access to capital, uh, we have a number of financial workshops coming up next month. And so I encourage you to look at those. For those of you who are interested in um, our business uh, plan clinic, we have one of those coming up. Uh, on the 28th of May, um, you know, I'm looking to see if it's elsewhere, but it, uh, yes, on the 28th of May. Um, and we also have financial clinics on the credit issue coming up in May. In June, the growth wheel tools that I think will be, we have both two growth wheel tool webinars and we have an in-person clinic that I want to draw to your attention. So. On the 17th of June, we're talking about organizing your business processes um, with growth wheel tools. And um, on the 23rd, we return to what's the big idea. And if you've lost sight of the big picture uh, or never worked on it, that's the one you might want to come to for that. And that's June uh, 23rd. And on June 24th, we have um, a uh, mentoring clinic for you. Um, and hopefully Joy will be able to join us at that. And that's for anybody who's worked on any of our growth wheels in the past. So now it's your turn. Are there any questions you want to ask me? This is me. Any questions from any of you? I should ask you a couple more uh, poll questions. So if you're before you head out the door, um, let's look at um, poll question number three. Mm -hmm. 
And so how long have you been in business? Let's take a moment. And okay. And uh, that's good. And I think that's all we're gonna and and uh, and I know you've all worked with SBDC before, so I think we'll stop at that. So we'll look again, and and we're not going to do any more poll questions. Um, I'm going to look and see if there's any other questions you may have that you put up. Katie asks a question. How often should you be evaluating your prices and adjusting them? That is a classic it depends answer, Katie. It's a great question. But I think you have to look at um, one of the indicators I would use is if you have reached a point of um, stagnation that you're, you're, maybe you're, you're only not getting that many new clients and you've got a good following, but you you know, and you aren't getting new clients. That might be a time. Or when you're seeing that your clients are kind of petering out. Um, that would be another time to take a look at is it, is it a pricing issue. Um, I think you also have to be aware of the macroeconomics, you know, what's going on in the times. And I would say every business owner should be reading um, business blogs. You should be looking at um, you should be looking at uh, uh, industry trends in your business, keeping up with uh, journals in your industry and in ge business in general. So if you don't um, take like Fast Company or um, Entrepreneur or for us in Chicagoland, you should be subscribing to Online Cranes Business or, um, or Hard Copy. I have both. Um, and in those ways, you're keeping abreast of what's really going on. Um, and that can give you a sense of whether you should re-examine. I hope that was helpful. Okay, next question. Do you know if the tools have been emailed out? They should have been while we were online. So if they aren't within a few minutes, I will double check with Elaney, our behind the scenes guru of managing the poll questions and making sure things get sent out to you. Okay. Kate says she got hers. So Sarah, hopefully you'll get it too. Any other questions that you have? If not, thank you for joining us, and I'll be glad to see you when you come in for counseling. Bye-bye.